What's going on YouTube? It's Tej back again with another video. And today, I'm giving you my week 15 NFL power ranking. Sorry, this video is coming out a little later than it normally does, but hopefully you're not power ranked out and hopefully you all enjoy today's video. And if you do, hit that like button and help me out a ton. New to the channel, want to see more football content in your life, just hit that big red subscribe button. And most importantly, comment your takeaways from these power rankings down in the comment section. Tell me who you think I have too high, who do I have too low, who's your favorite team, where do you think they fit into the mix? Let's jump into it. Final six teams, uh, or bottom six teams, in other words, all say the same. The Jags look like the worst team in the NFL, and there's so much going on around Urban Meyer, his coaching staff, and calling his assistant coaches losers, essentially. Players aren't getting along with them either, so it's uh, they feel like the worst situation, not only the worst team, but the worst situation to be a part of in Jacksonville right now. Houston didn't look all that good against Seattle, so they're staying put. The Lions... They are who we thought they are. You know, their 30 is about right. Uh, the Jets, I know they played a, a semi-close game for the most part against the Saints, but we'll talk about that later on. And the Bears did have a little bit of a lead against Green Bay, so maybe you can move them up off of that, but they lost, so I'm not going to move them. And the Giants got obliterated by the Chargers, so they're staying pat as well. Now let's get to the teams that were moving around a little bit. Carolina down three spots. Didn't really look all that good against uh, Atlanta and the whole... Flipping quarterbacks around, P.J. Walker for a little bit, Cam Newton there. Very college way of uh, going about it for Matt Rule. And also, no Joe Brady this week. You know, a big reason that surfaced as to why that change was made. Carolina wants to run the football more. Didn't really do that this week, so I don't know. Feels like trying to uh, you know, scoop out water on a sinking ship where they're trying to make a change and, and spinning it as if, you know, uh, it might save uh, where this team is projectedly heading over the past couple of weeks. But... This team's out of the playoff picture. Sorry, Carolina fans. Uh, Vegas Raiders down four spots. And uh, outside of Thanksgiving and the win against the Cowboys, this offense has just been really rough to watch uh, since the John Gruden situation. And he had to uh, be fired. And then since the Henry Ruggs off-field issues and since he was cut, I mean, it's just offense is is tough. And I think last week in my pick video, I was saying I, I like the idea of the Raiders being able to cover that 9.5. That was with me thinking they'd have Darren Waller. And I think this weekend really showed what this offense looks like when there's no Darren Waller at you know Derek Carr's disposal and you know, you're relying on uh, players that just aren't all that special. They aren't a part of what this team originally wanted to be, right? They weren't the original starters, so they're stepping in and you know it, it shows for this team. On number 24, the Atlanta Falcons got the win against Carolina. Tried to blow it late, but they held on, and that's that's progress in and of itself. We'll say that for another team here in just a moment. New Orleans Saints, I, I know it's tough to, to move the Saints down after they won, but an unimpressive win against an unimpressive team isn't anything I would hang my hat on, and uh, the Jets and the Saints were pretty close most of the way. And that's, that's tough to say because you looked at that game, and New Orleans has better players in the field, and... I think Robert Sala will be a head, good head coach, but Sean Payton's a better coach right now. Uh, and it was still really close, and these two teams played a competitive contest all the way until we got to the fourth quarter, pretty much. So not a good look there for New Orleans. So despite the win, they're down a spot. And part of that's also because Denver and Seattle looked pretty solid this week, right? Seattle beat up on Houston, so they were playing a team worse than them, but the, the score showed that. And uh, Russell Wilson's starting to get closer and closer to 100%, so... Because of that seven spot and uh, the ugly situation around it, it might even go to a team with a losing record. Uh, Seattle's still alive. You can't count them out of the playoff mix. And then the Denver Broncos, uh, when Teddy Bridgewater is able to put the ball where it needs to be and he can take advantage of the talent around him, this offense isn't all that bad. Uh, and the defense is is a very good unit as well, and it's you know coached well by Vic Fangio. But, I mean, this week, stealing the show, two touchdowns for both running backs, Melvin Gordon, both on the ground. Javante Williams, one on the ground, one through the air. There's weapons to be used. It just comes down to what Teddy Bridgewater you're going to get on a day-by-day -day basis. Philadelphia Eagles were on a bye week, so they don't move. Washington football team, missed opportunity, and I know it got kind of interesting at the end. A lot of these games got closed in the fourth quarter um, that we'll talk about this week. But a lot of that, I think, was more of a side effect of Dallas not playing well as opposed to Washington clawing their way back. Um, so missed opportunity there for Washington to potentially make themselves live in the division conversation, but also would have just served as a win that gains legitimacy, right? It shows that this team, hey, they can beat one of the best teams in the NFC. They can be serious playoff teams and should be a part of that playoff consideration. But 
No, that wasn't the case. I mean, Taylor Heineke doesn't give you those high-end games, which I would argue are rarer than people might want to uh, think that they are. Um, then this, this team's just not all that good on the offensive side, unfortunately. Pittsburgh Steelers, I had them overranked last week at 13. I even said that. I don't love where they were, but just the way the board had had played out, that's where they ended up. Uh, this week, down five spots. It's not necessarily all because of the loss against Minnesota. Again, part of it is just because, okay, they were overranked last week, so they're going to have a little bit of a nosedive this week. But a yeah, tough loss against Minnesota in that first half. I have never seen a Steelers game like that. Like that was among the most embarrassing Steeler defensive showings I've seen through 30 minutes of football. Now they certainly got back on track in the second half. The defense looked a lot better. The offense showed life. And Big Ben in the fourth quarter in specific kind of gave you some uh, some uh, flashback moments there. So all that's encouraging. And you know who knows where I might have Pittsburgh ranked if. Pat Frymouth doesn't have the ball jarred loose by Harrison Smith because at that point, Pittsburgh has plenty of momentum. I definitely think they, I would say with confidence, they get the two-point conversion. And with all that momentum going into overtime, Pittsburgh might have been able to steal that one on the road. So big play by Harrison Smith. And part of the reason the Vikings are up two spots, right? They they ran all over Pittsburgh in the first half. Dalvin Cook had a monster game. And uh, Minnesota has a knack for choking these contests. They tried their best against Pittsburgh, but they held on. And just like I said about Atlanta, that's progress. And this team has a ton of talent. They should be a part of the playoff mix. When you look at the roster, they should be better than a team vying for the seventh seed in a weak spot for the NFC. But, you know, coaching, the the the, the culture there, if you want to call it culture, but they just have a bad habit and a bad track record of blowing games that they shouldn't when they uh, have, you know, at least a touchdown lead in. On to the top 16, Dolphins were also on a bye this week, so they're not moving, but they're playing the Jets this upcoming week, so they're probably on the way up for next week's power rankings. Ravens down four spots. I said last week, I think they've had a critical mass of injuries. It's going to be tough for them to stay afloat, really. It'll take Lamar Jackson playing like an MVP, and instead this week, I was hoping to see MVP Lamar Jackson. Instead, what I got was hurt Lamar Jackson, and that makes it all the harder for this Ravens team to really be competitive. Give a ton of credit for John Harbaugh having this game be able to cover the spread with Tyler Huntley as the you know fill-in quarterback. We'll see Lamar's injury status moving forward, but I think the injuries are just mounting up where this team just is not full strength. And because of that, they're now at 15 and potentially falling even further as the year goes on. Browns beat the Ravens. Big win there, right? You lost to Baltimore two weeks ago. You have the bye week. Go ahead and avenge that loss. Baker Mayfield looked a little better this week. And, you know, it feels like a time component for this team where the closer he gets to 100%, kind of like Seattle in that respect, where once the QB starts to get healthy, there's, you know, Seattle doesn't have a great roster, but Cleveland does around Baker Mayfield. So if he continues to play better, this team really could be dangerous and be one of those squads that gets hot at the end of the year and, you know, could cause some chaos once we get to the playoffs. But, you know, it started with a win this week, and now I think they might have some possible momentum. And pieces to work off of moving forward. Cincinnati Bengals are at 13. I have the 49ers who beat them this week at 12. I think if these two teams played 10 times, it could be split 5-5 five and five pretty easily because this game kind of showcased what the what matchup you thought would make the difference, right? I picked the Bengals to win because I saw Joe Burrow, those wide receivers, as, a, as too much for the 49ers defense to try to handle. And the 49ers defense is really thin. What we saw in the first half and when San Francisco got to a big lead was that offense creates a whole lot of problems for a team like Cincinnati, especially down Logan Wilson, where their rushing attack is explosive. They can run play action off of it. They have so many dynamic playmakers, and they make you not only defend the field vertically, but horizontally. And because of that, 49ers got to a big lead. They press their mismatch. And then when the Bengals are forced to throw the football more, and Zach Taylor comes out of his you know passive shell, the Bengals all of a sudden are pressing their advantage against San Francisco. So again, I think one of these matchups where if they play 10 times... It'd be split. Uh, I, that's honestly what I think. That's why I kind of like that they're next to each other in these power rankings. Titans coming in at number 11. I know who's winning against the Jags, and the Jags are number 32 in these power rankings, but a shutout's rare. There's not a whole lot of shutouts in the NFL season, so that's impressive in and of itself. The Titans defense continues to show that it's a solid unit exceeding our expectations coming into the year, and I'm not baking this into these power rankings. They won. That's what moved them up to 11, but you got Julio Jones back this week. A.J. Brown a week or two away from returning. And then it sounds like Derrick Henry is going to be back by wild card weekend. So this is one of those teams where they're figuring out how to play without those stars. So what happens when they get them back? Again, a scary prospect for the AFC once we get to the playoffs. Chargers and Bills trade places. The Bills force overtime against Tampa Bay after falling behind big. Moral victories don't pay Bills. But that's one I think you can at least be somewhat proud of because 
really had no business pushing that game to overtime. Uh, so the Bills definitely impressed me this week by showing that much fight and, and showing they can hang with maybe the best team in football. We'll see uh, where I have them in these power rankings. Chargers up a spot. They they finally did what they should this week. This game, this team is just so up and down and consistent. When you think they're going to play a close game, it ends up being a blowout. And, you know, like the Ravens game last year, they were the team getting blown out. This was one where it's just, just like the Chargers should stop the Giants. And they did just that. So that is a step in the right direction. If the Chargers play with consistency, given the weapons they have, whew, that team also very scary in the AFC. Mix and could make a run to the Super Bowl potentially. But on to the top eight, I have the Indianapolis Colts staying pat, as do the Dallas Cowboys. Colts on a bye week, so that one's self-explanatory. Same thing for New England at four. Uh, these two teams play each other this week. That's going to be an awesome game to watch. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, the reason they're staying at seven is I know they won, but they really tried to choke it away at the very end. And uh, Dak Prescott hasn't quite looked to the same MVP type of candidate that he was pre-calf injury. So I think it's just going to take some time. And naturally, when you know I used to say this all the time, when you play 16 games in a year, now you play 17 games in a year, your offense is not going to be elite, hitting on all cylinders year-round, right? You're going to have your ebbs and flows, your ups and downs. And this, I think of this is just a little bit of a down spurt for Dallas. There's too much talent on the offensive side, and Kellen Moore is too good of a play caller and play designer for this offense to not pick up where it was at the beginning of the year. So I think it's just a matter of time before Dallas gets out of the funk. But the good news is, a year ago, there's no way this team would win this game without their offense being elite. Their defense earned a W this week, and that's something that makes this Dallas team a legit Super Bowl contender this year. That said, that game got way too close. That should have been a blowout from start to finish with how they started, how they played in the middle. They should have closed it out, and it shouldn't have even been close. So because of that, I'm a little reluctant to move them. Additionally, the teams ahead of them, uh, I, I think I'd take over Dallas in a neutral field setting. Cardinals, they lose last night. That's a tough break uh, and, and a really fun game to watch. Um, just Kyler Murray not quite on the same page, with you know, especially that first deep ball to A.J. Green. He's not looking for it. So there's these little moments where it's not quite hitting at 100%. Kind of, uh, again, when I was talking about the Cowboys, you have your ups and downs. Sometimes you hit a lull and how much you can do about it other than play through it. So uh, I still think the Cardinals are a really good team. This was one of the first times their defense kind of got exposed, if you want to say. But the Rams offense has the firepower to do that just against anybody. So I'm not really worried about the Cardinals. They're just lost, so they got to come down for number one. Chiefs are up a spot. Winning games with their defense, granted this week the offense looks great, but they're averaging like 45 points against the Raiders this season. And then since their loss to the Titans, averaging like 14 points a game or something like that. So all that floated out there by uh, Sam Monson of uh, Pro Football Focus. That is unbelievable. So the offense, I still have my concerns about unless they recognize, hey, this is a single high look. This is going to be cover one or cover three. We know how to beat that. But this defense is it's playing really well right now. I don't know if it's sustainable. But right now, it's it's enough to win games. So they're into the top five once again, like they were at the beginning of the year. I already talked about the Patriots. Rams, huge win. And I could see an argument, hey, they took down the number one team. Last night showcased what the Rams could be. Keep in mind, no Jalen Ramsey, too, which is an impressive uh, addition to this win. But I think the, I'm not quite ready to give the Rams the number one spot. Like, I think some people might uh, after taking down the Cardinals, who was at number one spot in a lot of people's power rankings. I'm just not quite there yet. Um... A little too inconsistent for me, but last night was a signature prove it win. They hadn't had a signature win since week three when they topped the Bucks, but that was so long ago. Just like we were talking about with the Saints when they beat the Packers week one, where it's like you can ignore that one. This legitimized that the Rams, when they play their brand of football and they're playing good, they can be a Super Bowl contender. And that's what we saw on Monday Night Football last night. So they're in the top three. Bucks up a spot, Packers up a spot. So Green Bay, my number one team, Tampa Bay right behind them. It's 1A, 1B. Green Bay's only lost two games with uh, Aaron Rodgers as starting quarterback. One of them was week one. One was against their, I, I'll call them their biggest division rival. I know the Bears have more history with them, but right now their biggest competition is, is Minnesota. And Tampa Bay, if, if they had maintained a more um, consistent margin of victory, right? Like if that game didn't go to overtime against the Bills, I might have nudged the Bucks up and over. But because that game got close, down the stretch, Tampa Bay lost it. Uh, near the end and then eventually won it back in OT. That might have held him back a little bit, but 
It's 1A, 1B. To me, Packers, Bucks, with the Rams knocking on the door, best teams in the NFL right now. And the Patriots might have a serious argument this upcoming week if they knock off the Colts in convincing fashion. But that's going to do it for my Week 15 NFL Power Rankings. Tell me what you think down in the comment section. Who do I have too high? Who do I have too low? Tell me where you think your favorite team should slot in at. Hopefully, you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit that like button. It helped me and my channel out a ton. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more football content in your life, just hit that big red subscribe button. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Till next time, my name is Tej, and I'm signing off.